Not all, I'm not into like the list meet and talk about realtors and give me a five minute presentation and stuff. Like here's what I want. I want to see what you can do with the client. I want to see if you give them the customer service they need. I want to see if you get the deal done. I want to see how your communication is between me, my client, the title company, and everybody involved to get this thing done really smooth and that my clients are happy as can be about your services, right? And so that's what you need to sell them on. Don't do this horse and pony show about what they're looking for in a, in a mortgage broker and give them a five minute presentation. You go straight for the gusto here and you tell them, listen, I'm going to take the best care of your clients. I'm going to get the deal done very smoothly. I don't know if you, if you're, you know, because a lot of these people are very loyal to their lenders. So what you're looking for is somebody that's caught in a deal that they're that they're having seats. And when people switch lenders, it's because they had a problem with the last lender. And what you're trying to do is find that perfect timing of somebody that's having pro problems and looking for somebody different to kind of because once they find the one that 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 does the best job, they're gonna they're not going to move. So that's the thing. If you if you notice, agents are very loyal to their mortgage brokers that they've done business with for a while because they know how they operate and it's too risky to take a client and try out another mortgage broker on a deal where you're gonna make fifteen thousand dollars but you're, you're you're risking that on this mortgage broker that may or may not do a good job but you know this other guy's gonna do a good job right so it's hard to switch when you got a good one so what you're trying to do is trying to is trying to find the new agents that are still looking for that good one right so go after new agents that's a good pool for you to, to go after and also you know call the agents and ask them how it's going with their current lender and if you're thinking about you know trying out another lender right just be straight up about it and say listen give me a shot you know say listen I'm gonna be the lender that you stick with forever because I'm gonna I'm gonna give you and your client and the title company such good service that you're never gonna use anybody else ever again once you use me so just give me a shot let me prove it to you and then that'll be that. All you need, bro, is a good 10 agents sending you business, 10, 15 agents, you know, producing agents sending you business, and you'll be, you'll be gold. You can do about that because at the end of the day, all, all they see is dollars, right? That's all that seller sees is dollars. You can, you can try to, and, and like a lot of these coaches and brokerages, they have these, you know, slick, they'll try to tell you that, you know, there's ways that you can show them the, the value of paying the extra 1% or 1.5% or 2% or whatever, you know, and yeah, you, you, you could, um, but at the end of the day, it's like all they're looking at is numbers <laughs> and they see that they're paying less over here. That's what they're going to do. They don't care what you say. So you're gonna lose deals um, when it comes to that. I think when the when the dust settles from all this discounting and stuff, we'll see where things really stand because, you know, like the Zillow thing for example, that just went down. Um, you know, that was you could see that coming a mile away. I mean, there's no way you can lose houses, uh, lose money on houses. You can only lose money on houses for so long, going into an escalating market, and then what's going to happen when you own thousands of houses and the market crashes? I think what they did was smart because they're basically saying, wait a minute, you know, if we own these 7,000 houses when the market crash, we're really going to be in trouble. You know, if we if we dump them now, we're, we're just in this much trouble. But if we wait and keep doing what we're doing, we're going to be in this. Much much trouble um, you know and so with the discounters I feel like it's kind of the same thing because you know you got to think how are they making money right how are you making money on you know 1% you know when you have all these expenses and everything else when you look at the brokerages you know like the red fins for example you know they're still running negative maybe they pull their stuff out of their you know negative profit you know somehow and they did like they just came out with their earnings report and they did have lessened their losses a little right um, but we'll see how that plays out it's just like there's so much expenses and the customer service right when it comes to customer service a lot of these discounters are not giving you the customer service and I think it's all gonna come back to customer service and relationships so the number one reason why people choose a real estate agent is because they had a friend in the business right NAR actually did a study and it was the number one reason that's that they had a friend in the business with a great reputation I quit trying to build my business back in 2017 because I started doing the coaching thing but I had it running it's running on autopilot I do the weekly email people you know deals flow in every week and I just service people 
And at the end of the day, this is a servicing business. It's not a sales business. The reason being is because since closings happen every day, we don't have to try to get people to buy or sell. Right? Our job is just to figure out what they want to do and help them do it. So we're just servicing. We're not selling. The only thing we're selling is ourselves that we care about them and we want to work hard. Right? So that's where the relationships over transactions come from. You know, when I came out with that phrase, it just kind of hit me because, uh, you know, when I lost everything and I realized that my clients were still buying and selling at the bottom while I was roofing a house or working on an oil rig, I was like, huh, something's to this, you know, and I started kind of slowly understanding the mechanics of how this business really works, right? Because my thing was, is I always wanted to build a business after that point that would never fall regardless of what the market did. I never wanted to sleep in my car again or, you know, uh, eat out of people's refrigerators and roof houses and stuff. Um, so I don't know, I can keep going here, but I think you guys kind of get where I'm going with it.